just double check here. Huh. Oh, yep, yep, yep. It's totally working. Nice. Okay. Hey, I'm a new streamer slash YouTube person. Uh, give it a whack. Just want to see what happens. Hopefully it'll be fun. Um, right. So, real quick. Uh, I'm going to be... I love Dark Souls. I'm probably going to be doing a lot of videos about that. Um, I've played them a lot, so... I'll be trying to provide some pro tips, as they say. And also some conversation, because there's going to be some, you know, boring points that we'll need to occupy with uh, words. So, that's the plan. Pro tips. Showing off some cool soul stuff. Maybe talking about some fun things. Um, right, it's not going to be politically correct. I probably will swear or say some things that are offensive or crude. So, that's your heads up. I did flag this for mature content. Hopefully that's all it takes. Right, we're going to start things off with uh, Pyromancer here. I've got a build planned already. This is going to be a level 60 build that I'm going to take into New Game Plus to pick up double copies of Pyromancies. It's going to be a mid-rolling build which is usually not advisable for PvP, um, but I like mid-roll, and also it's going to open up a lot of versatility for the build. I'll be able to use quite a few weapons. I'm going to be having 16 strength and 16 dex in the end, which will let me use a lot of stuff. Um, probably going to be running Obsidian Greatsword towards the end because it's like it's non-scaling full physical damage. Very good weapon, and you can buff it. Um, probably going to start with Gravelord Greatsword. I haven't fetched that in a while, though, so it might be kind of tough. Uh, right. So, some, some quick uh, pro tippage here. For the gift, I always recommend Master Key, because um, it lets you access a lot more of the game early on than you would otherwise. It's also the most expensive gift to buy. These can all be gotten in-game, except for the old Witch Ring. Maybe the Pendant, I can't remember. Um, the Witch Ring is cool. No, oh yeah, you can trade something with Snuggly the Crow for this. I remember that now. Right, it lets you talk to the the spider sister. So that's fun, like, if you want to get all the lore tidbits, you know. But, yeah, everything here can be gotten, I'm pretty sure. Probably even the pendant from some trade. But uh, the Master Key is the most expensive one, because it's 10,000 souls normally. So, um, I recommend starting with that for both the access to the game and because it's expensive otherwise and, and, and it takes a little while to get. So, uh, yeah, why Pyromancer? This class is one of the most versatile to build off of. 90% uh, of the builds I make are either Pyromancer or Bandit. Rarely, Warrior will pop up. But the thing is, Warrior and Bandit class often come up even, like with the amount of levels that you need to spend to get to your ending point. But, um, I think because the bandit has 10 faith, you can potentially pick up a ring that gives you attunement slots, and then you can sling a heal, I believe. Also, I use Mugen Monkey to plan my builds. You guys should totally use that as well if you, uh, want to make, like, some serious, like, twink builds, like, min max type stuff. Um, it seems to think that the bandit has slightly higher magic defense than the knight, probably because of, if you look at the intelligence, or no, I'm sorry, than the warrior. If you look at the intelligence and faith, it's 9-9 nine nine here, but the bandit's got 10 faith, and I think that gives you more magic defense. So, that could be wrong on the movement, you know, sometimes they are wrong. Matter of fact, I did the build the other day that was a strength build, and one of the weapons that I wanted to use, the weight was incorrect on the sheet. And so, <laughs> I had to scrap that build. I was very upset. Wasted a lot of time getting that damn thing. Um, give me one second here. I'm getting a whole lot of messages. Okay. No, that's fine. Just, uh, just the wife and whatnot. Okay! Right, so for now I'm having the audio projected through my TV. 
I'm going to have a listen to this later on because I'm probably going to put it on YouTube and see if uh, the mic's picking it up too much. If if that's the case, I'll switch the audio over to the headset, but I prefer doing it this way. Okay, so we're a pyromancer. Yeah, because that's the most efficient way to build it. This is Mrs. Thickbottom. She has a large lower body because she's extra thick. Um, I like this face. Let's talk faces for a minute. There is the cute Asian girl. Commoner's okay. Delta Farmer is like a slightly improved version, I think. The Astoran uh, royalty I actually like quite a lot. She's cute, but very pale. But this is like kind of a a mature, like milfy kind of face. I like that, so we're gonna run with it for now. I gave her a slight tan because she's also ridiculously pale to start. Uh, this is uh, the only hair that matters. Best one in the game. <laughs> Can't argue about that. Hair color, that's up to you. Maybe you like a nice blonde. I happen to like brunettes. Okay, and here we go. You can uh, check out the cutscene on your own time. It's all over YouTube. <laughs> I got sh stuff to do. All right. Now, I played this game a lot. I'm pretty good at it. PvP, though, I'm... I, I don't I'm like 50-50. I'm kind of mediocre. I've won my fair share of battles, but I'm by no means an expert. I can't parry worth a damn. But I am good at PvE, so... We'll just be blitzing along here. And I shall show you how to get good at Dark Swoles. Um, but I do recommend you know, planning your build as step one. But, okay, a word about that. If you're new to the series, don't plan your build. Don't do anything. Don't look anything up. Stop watching this video immediately and just go play the game. Um, play it blind. Explore. Make mistakes. You know, honestly, if I could dump all this information out of my head and start from the top, just to have that experience and wonder and awe back, shit, I sure wish I could, but alas, I cannot. I am stuck being a veteran. Um, but maybe you've already played, in which case, good for you. So now maybe you need, or would like, some uh, additional information. Right. That's what I'm going to try and provide. These hashtag pro tips. Bear seek, seek lest. Cool story, my guy. Did you know that Oscar fought the Asylum Demon on the roof? You might recall the Asylum Demon starts on the roof and then jumps down. Um, it smashed him through that hole, which is how he wound up here in his lowly state, so wounded. What a shame. Why didn't he just drink the Estus? What an idiot. <laughs> now, my theory is... Yes, this wouldn't have helped. He knew he was doomed because he was running out of humanity. He was about to turn hollow, which he says he is, you know. So that's why he doesn't bother drinking Estus, because he has begun to despair. And, uh, you know, Estus does not cure your sin, but only your body, so that would be why. Hello, fatty. Did that hurt? I bet it did. I love using the bandit on this guy, because you can just fucking work him so quickly, it's beautiful. That battle axe really just cuts through him like a hot knife through butter. So, um... The crow's nest is right out here. I'll show you that in a moment. But in case you didn't know, there's also an item over here. A dinky little soul. Oh. All right, that's the crow's nest. So to trade, you, you, give me warm, give me soft. She's so cute. Anyway, you stand in the nest, you drop the item, then you have to quit the game and reload the game, and uh, then whatever you traded for will be there waiting. That's how you do it. In case you didn't know. 
Most of, I mean, okay, this game is not new. Been around for ages. I played it on PS3 when it first came out. Maybe you did too. Um, so a lot of this is probably shit that you already know. But just in case, I'm sharing anyway. Okay, so we need to get more swole. Where can I get a decent shield around here? Think, think, think. Yeah, I think I will. Okay. I'm gonna need a decent shield to go into. Oh, I know where to get one. Easy. Right, I'm gonna need a decent shield to go get the Grave Lord Sword so I don't get fucking decimated. I'm probably gonna get real hurt anyway. Those skeletons are so quick and I've got zero poise, so. Hopefully I don't get bled out, because that'll be absolutely death. Um, right, if you're speedrunning or what have you, highly recommend the Morning Star, because bleed is so good. <laughs> uh, early game, or, or if you're doing like an SL1, do not underestimate the bleed. You can just do oodles of damage with it. Oodles of noodles of damage. Right. Moving along, leaving the boneheads behind. We are not a fan of them. There's the crow. Quick rest here. Moving along. <clears throat> so, um... Firekeeper. Right, in case you didn't know, her tongue was cut out. That's why she can't talk. Um, I don't exactly tell you why. The Crestfallen Warrior says something about so that she will not take a god's name in vain. So, firekeepers are few. They're rare. They're chosen for whatever reason makes them special. Uh, so, I guess she refused... She does not want to be a firekeeper, even though she has the gift. So, in order to stop her from crying out for help or whatever, and stop her from escaping, they cut her tongue out and throw her in the cell. Because she's undead, she doesn't really need to eat or drink or sleep, which would be why the cell does not have an exit. She's just really stuck in there. It's a miracle she hasn't gone hollow. Maybe firekeepers are immune to that, though. But she must be undead in order to survive. Okay, so I'm going to take this and hopefully not get fucking destroyed. Oh! A bit slow on the roll there. Oh no, my hundred souls. What do we do? We'll leave them behind. We got what we came for. Solid shield. Bading. Make sure we're still fast rolling. Nope. How about now? Fast roll. Yeah. Some classes do not start with fast roll with all their gear on. The bandit, for one, you gotta take off a couple of pieces of armor. I highly recommend you do that to start. Do I want anything from here? We'll do a suicide run and just grab all this shit. Don't be afraid to die, as long as you have nothing to lose. I mean, certainly you don't want to be taking risks like this, running around with, like, ten humanity and a ton of souls and crap like that. I will actually be able to use this Y two-handed. So... This Y is really good crowd control, because you can knock shit down with it. it makes a very good weapon to start doing stuff. Oh, don't mark me! Later, losers. Supposedly, there's a little green shield somewhere around there. I can never remember where the hell it's at. It's not a good shield, anyway. This is a much better shield to grab early on. Ooh, 500 souls. I wonder if that was the big bonehead. Nope. Apparently, little skellies worth 500 as well. That's 
Frickin' damn, nope, something's worth 50. Hmm. Okay, so we're gonna have to destroy this guy before he- Whoa! Fireballs me to death. Before the boneheads catch up. Sounds like they're catching up. Hello, bonehead. Oh, I thought I could backstab when they're down like that. This is gonna take a minute. Come on! Huh! Yeah! Mm. Feel the burn. If only skeletons could bleed. Getting out of this place is the real nightmare once you have the Great Board Sword. Unpleasant, to say the least. Okay, so now I can actually use this Y. I wonder if I want to. Okay, first let me two hand this. 113 damage versus 169, that's not much difference. And it doesn't have bleed. Can I use this? Nope, I need to be smarter. And I'm not leveling intelligence. So this build is going to be sturdy and capable of big damage output with the pyromancy because at the level it's going to be playing at you're going to want to have maximum upgrade. There's really no reason not to. Oh, not good, not good, not good at all. I have to abort. Oh god! Okay, we're gonna have to ignore the necromancers for now. It looks like I just do a full-on kamikaze run. Oh no! Don't carve me up like a turkey. Those boneheads are lethal. I tell you what, that uh, scimitar and a little cloth wearer. Mm. Big pain. That's their parry stance, by the way. You see a bonehead doing that? You do not attack. Because it will wreck your shit. Oh, not good! Or, well, you can jump attack them. That's the safe bet. Ting ting! Out of the way. Hoo hoo! Oh! Zero poise is painful to say the least. Ooh, I'm really lucky I didn't fucking die. Right right then and there. Taking a lot of risks here. Nice. Swing, but you missed. Oh shit, not good. Gotta get these guys out of the doorway. I'm going to survive. Hopefully, I don't die from this drop. Yeah. The fall damage is really quite minimal in Souls 1. It's nice. Okay. Ooh. Oh god. Oh, not good. Oh, keep... Oh, damn it. Damn... it. Okay. That's alright. That's alright. It was bound to happen. Once we have the sward, it will all be worth it. Just gotta get the fucking thing. Maybe I will take ow the shorter route. Uh. I really need to heal. Thanks. Jeez, like a repeat of last time. Wow, I'm lucky that didn't kill me. Okay. Making my way downtown, walking fast. I could take that shortcut. I think I will. Huh. 
Assuming this is where I think I am. It's not. Oh, crap. Yeah. Hey, guy. No, I'm not a cleric. Um, you're gonna try and kill me, aren't you? Okay, so he's gonna pull that lever. That's where I need to be, somewhere over there. Oh, no, you gotta be... Okay, good. There's a shortcut bonfire or something right here. Stop it! I never use this damn thing. You know, I'm actually not gonna rest there because... If I go the way I'm currently planning, I'm just gonna use a Homeward Bone to escape at the end. Back to the closer bonfire. Alright, let's see if Patches is gonna be a complete fucking tool. Looks like I ran him. Okay, yeah, I'm getting close. The Titanite Demon is going to be a problem. Oh! I'm not even... Well, okay, you can kill anything in this game at any level. It's just a question of how long will it take and how hard will it be. Hopefully they do not follow me this deep. They should not. Like I said, it's been a while since I grabbed the... Uh... But in order to do this, you need the Eye of Death. He does a stomp or jump. I'm probably just dead. Yep. Okay. So we have the eye of death, though. So what that means now is we can hop in the coffin without aggroing him. So I won't have to mess with him again. That's good. That's just I gotta make my way down now. I bet this is exactly how most people do it when they go to get the grave lord sword. So the Gravelord Sword is dope because it has really good base damage early on. The way that you twink in this game, DS1 Remastered, since uh, they put the weapon matchmaking in, you're looking for high base damage type stuff with low requirements. Oh, he actually pulled the switch. Um, right. So that's why a lot of people use spells for twinking. Sorcery, that is. Or, or miracles. Wrath of the Gods is another good one. But not pyromancy, because that requires upgrading. Um, so you cannot upgrade catalysts in this one. They're always, they're just based on intelligence, so that's why a lot of people do the minimum for Dark Bead. Whoa. And, uh... Oh crap! Ah, oh, man, you know, I contemplated drinking Estus. But I was like, nah, I don't need it. Right, anyway, a lot of Twink builds use Dark Bead, and with like an Ulusil Catalyst, because that's another like non-scaling high base damage type of thing. The Ulusil Catalyst has a fixed rate of 180, whoop, um, no matter what your relevant intelligence is, so. Of course, I don't think you can cheat to get spells in this game. Like, you have to actually go and pick them up, as far as I know. You can't do, like, a, a mule with spells on it or something. So that means that all the twinks that have Dark Bead actually went and picked it up themselves. So, I guess uh, there's some merit to that. 
But it is really fucking cheesy. <laughs> At low level, you just you just die when you get dark beaded. Um, probably even the crest shield is not enough because it'll blow through your guard and you'll end up taking like I think half of it, half of the dark bead to the face. Yeah, there we go. As long as a bonehead doesn't show up, we'll be fine. Oh, look at that. There is one. Oh, mama. Oh, he looks stuck. He's not... I don't think he's going anywhere. This is taking a long time. I do have the Eye of Death. There it goes. Right, you need the Eye of Death for this to work, otherwise it, uh won't take you in. It's, it's the Covenant item. Pray to Papa Nito. Please give me good sword! Thank you, Father. Last time I checked, Grave Lording still only works in New Game Plus, which is... terrible. That's one of the things they should have fixed with the remaster. I mean, really. Okay, get me the fuck out of here. Because almost nobody bothers with New Game Plus. There's not really a lot of point to it unless you're trying to get, you know, duplicates of spells. And even then, that's like... Most people won't bother with that unless they're doing a full 120 PvP build. Oh, by the way, the PvP level meta is 120 unless you're a scrub. I don't know why the 125 trend started. Uh, but it's total bullshit, so... Oh! You wanna actually... get good? Or be, you know... a stalwart bro? You're gonna stick with the good, solid, traditional 120. Back from Demon Souls all the way up. Yeah, Demon Souls is, uh, the game I started with. <laughs> but, um... Shit, I did not know what I was doing back then. Uh, at all. I was like, the noobiest of noob. And I was like, this game is like really hard. Like, I can't do anything no matter what class I am. I just keep getting killed. I could not beat the first level, in fact. Um, for whatever, I, I, yeah, for whatever reason. I can't remember. If I just couldn't figure it out or I just died so much that I gave up. Um, but I quit that game for a while. Yeah, and then... Uh, right, Dark Souls 1 came out. And I started playing Souls 1. Because I thought, well, it's newer. Maybe it'll be improved or a little easier or whatever. So I got good at Souls 1. And I beat it. And after that is when I went back to... Uh, to play Demon Souls. And with the skills I had gained, I was able to beat that as well. Let's see. Got about 40 minutes, less than that, left for this video. So we have our Grave Lord Sword, but I don't have enough stats to use it yet. I need more decks. I'm not really a fan of light weapons. So that <laughs> pretty much means I'm not a fan of dex weapons. But I do like the Flamberg or Flamberge, whatever. It looks so cool in this game. It has the best look out of all of them. That awesome wavy snake sword. I love it to death. That was scary. I haven't seen him do the bite attack in a long time. But yeah, I, I've always liked the... the big smash, like... one-shot 
little mobs and stun shit, you know, it just it's just my style. Ooh, everybody has their own style. Some people love that like quick and fast, like hit and run, get in, swing a few times and then roll out type gameplay. Nah. It's not for me, although I do enjoy the balder sword now and then. That thrust, mm, so good. Long poke. What else do I like? Silver Knight Spear. Mm. Uh, is another fun weapon. Although low on damage. But like, that reach. So good. So I guess I like reach. But, like a great club or something like that, that is really my favorite. I don't want to kill this guy yet. I don't like to kill Black Knights until I have 10 humanity, preferably the gold ring. Okay, I think we'll actually might be taking a break here because now I have company. I'm gonna unplug the mic for a bit. Hey. Right, we have a moment of silence here, so... Uh, yeah, that is how I recommend you deal with how early on if you want to. Bleed is effective against most things. Yep, yep. So, I also find it easier to fight him without locking on. Locking on makes it more difficult to evade his big-ass one-hit KO weapon. So... Get used to fighting unlocked. If you haven't picked up that skill already, it's very useful and very pro. So you will look awesome if you <laughs> know how to do that. Especially in PvP, fighting unlocked is like, holy shit, that guy's good. Um, so you might have noticed I picked up a blue chunk out of nowhere. That was the dumbass Black Knight throwing himself off the cliff as he was trying to chase me. I'm kind of pissed. Not that I intended to use his weapon, but his shield would have been nice. And I had minimum item find at the moment with zero humanity, so...
this is the usual route that I take. I like to leave Tars alone in case I ever decide to uh, do some ridiculous PvP shit over there, you know. It's always a madhouse, or at least it was back in PS3 days in Undead Bird. <clears throat> you can find trouble there at pretty much any level. So I try to keep that as an open option. Plus you could just skip it, and I don't see any reason not to. I always go back and visit the merchant later, as perhaps you will see. Although we don't have a lot of time left, so maybe not. That might not actually make it into a video, as uh, I'm going to try and only broadcast when it's quiet. Usually there's a lot of noise when people are home, so... Right, so uh, from Firelink you go down the tower, you go across Valley of Drakes, you come out here, gives you easy access to Havel, and even better, easy access to Wolfring and the Elite Knight armor set. Oh shit, I can level up actually. Let's get Dexy. What else do I want? I think I want a bit of these. Check my build. Okay, it's not on that screen right now. Hope I don't fuck this up. <laughs> I seriously regret that. Alright, where are you? Big Swad. Make sure we're okay. We're not fast rolling anymore. There we go. Just have to take the gloves off. Wow. People trying to text me right now. Look at that. That's good damage right there. I like one-shotting stuff. <laughs> Suits me just fine. So this sword is pretty dope. As you can see, good damage, even at minimum stats to use it. I can only two-hand it for 16 strength. Very min-maxi. It's pretty long, relatively quick. It's the same as a great sword, pretty much. But it has this epic thrust move, which gives you so much reach. Wow, how did that miss? There we go. Very, very good. And unexpected in PvP, as it's the only curved sword with a thrust like that. Like, <laughs> it's probably as long as the Claymore. Let's see how quickly it can dispatch. Oh, three hits. Actually thought it might take two. So... This thing can inflict toxin, which is better than poison. Wow, look at that. Very sharp. Um, I think I read one time it only inflicts toxin on the thrust attack, but then that might not be true. I honestly don't know. Because usually most things are dead before the poison even procs, unless you're using uh, dung pies, which I am not a fan of. I don't really like consumables at all. Nice, that's a good find. Usually I don't bother with these guys, I just grab... Oh, they didn't even wake up. But yeah, usually I'll grab and I'll just run. Cause... Fuck em! I mean, if I had a weapon weaker than this, I wouldn't even bother killing any of that stuff. I'd just grab the armor and run, even while they were chasing me. The running attack's also quite good on this. It's fast, good reach. Curved greatswords have always been kind of a... Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say underrated. I think they kind of deserve their rating, but like... They've been looked down on as inferior. In some ways they are. Dark Souls 2, they're amazing. But we're not playing Souls 2 right now, so we're not going to talk about that. Stuff. 
So you might be asking yourself, why the name AC Pilot Zero? Well, <laughs> it turns out that I was a From Software fan even before I was a From Software fan. Back before they were really... Back before they were known for souls, you know. They made Armored Core, which is what the AC stands for. Pilot Zero is just my own little, look how cool I am, yeah, OC, Pilot Zero. I like to collect a bit of moss off these guys before I leave. Even though I'm not using farm gear and I should be at this point. Uh, five humans. Oh shit, hello. Alright, so let's go back, because I want to get a... Do I have a blooming? I do? Never mind, I don't need it. Yeah, this is the first spot you can get blooming, I think. The other spot being the undead merchant. But I usually don't go that way till later. So I like to get one for him from here because it's free, and it ensures that when I go to fetch the Firekeeper Soul in the swamp, I can recover from toxin, which I most likely will get while I'm doing that. This is another mob I prefer to fight when I have maximum farm because that Titanite catch pole is really hard to get. It's very low drop rate. And it's, it's fun. It's one of those unique weapons. Okay, so now my objective is to accumulate 20,000 souls. I should have thought of that before I leveled up other stats. Usually I like to run minimum stats for a weapon and then get 20k to grab the seal. And go from there. So, what I can do though, what does it take to upgrade this? Probably demon type. So one of the ways I like to accumulate the 20k is farming in the parish. You can rack up... Hum okay, as long as... If you didn't know already, as long as the boss is alive in the area, you can gain humanity just from killing shit. It's rare, but it does happen. Oh, why am I not wearing my... I probably, I probably can't do the weight of the Elite Knight. Also, I like to come here to, um, free gold man, what the hell's his name? Mmm, well, like, you know who I'm talking about. Gold man. Oh shit, I forgot about that guy. <laughs> Woo, okay. Wow, I'm like on autopilot right now. Will he come out here? Ooh, he will. Ooh, not good. Not good at all. This is not that tough. Oh! Glug. Right now. No, no! My loot! Oh, lame. Ooh, tower shield. Right. So I've come here to free gold guy early so I can kill him to get the ring. Uh, because the ring is good. <laughs> now, um, killing gold guy early does block you from getting two armor sets. If you care. They don't fit into most builds. But the Firekeeper's armor is actually very high defense for a light armor. It just doesn't have any poise on it. So, if you're doing no poise, or low poise, that's probably... You're gonna end up wearing the chest plate. Probably. So, keep that in mind. Gold Guy's armor, though, is usually not... It usually doesn't show up on the uh, recommended armor loadout. Boogan Monkey has that as well. To help you gather the poise that you want. Uh, or just defense got an armor recommendation tool. Very handy. Unless, you know, you care about fashion. But when you're twinking, you don't really have room to care about fashion. Um, if you're trying to min-max, you just don't have room. You don't have the extra weight to spare. 
trying to use as few points as possible, cram it all into a low level. And poise is extremely important. Do I have a cover? Green hoods are extremely important in Souls 1 because of the stun lock. They got rid of that in the later uh, version, you know, the later games. I happen to like collecting gestures, so I always sign up with this guy to learn shrug and then go from there. Let's check the time, okay. Got about 20 minutes. I also like coming back to this bonfire because you get 10 estes out of it for free. I should do that actually. So the game's not new, of course. Been around since PS3 era. You're probably not a new player either. I meant to say this earlier. Maybe I did? If you're a new player though, don't watch any videos. <laughs> don't prep at all, just go into it blind. Enjoy the experience and the gratification that comes with making the game your bitch as you get good. Uh, because yeah, like, like I said, you know, played Demon Souls, quit, blah blah blah, got good. Felt good to do that, and I can look back and know that I've improved. And it's nice to, uh, to now be on par with some of the people who helped you along the way. Oh shit. Ha! He fell. Sometimes a quick flick of the stick will make your attack hit more than one because it like sweeps it across, you know? That's how I got all three of those. See? That's how I got two there. Locked onto him, swapped to him in between the attacks, so it hits both. These guys are annoying though with the uh, buckler. If they start blocking, it's like, Ugh, I'm gonna wait for you to stop. Here's Gold Man. Law Trek, that's his fucking name, just remembered. Guess I have a visual memory. Always talk to him twice just to make sure. Generally, you wanna talk to everyone until they repeat themselves. That's how you know you got the goods. I always try to carry around 10 humanity as early as possible for farming. Suspicious. Where the hell did he go? Oh. oh okay. Well. Stun lock. Oh. No can roll. That's all right. Just more opportunity to farm. Oh, I forget. Well, that's fine. My short-term memory is not the best. <laughs> I thought I rested at the parish. Ho 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 ho. At least I get tennis. Just... <clears throat> How does that button work? Think about it. It should be like a lever at the top and the bottom. But I guess, you know, they couldn't do that because... 
it's a video game. Baldur Knights are pretty easy to bait to attack. As soon as you get close to them, they start attacking, so that's... You just go and swinging. The Buckler guys, though, don't always do that. But the Big Shield guys, they always do. when they have the buff. I should probably strap that elite man armor on. It's certainly rolling as, um, oh god. Because that's going to be what I'm doing for the build. Another flick of the stick there, two to get all three. Okay, as long as the dude doesn't show up to wreck me while I'm changing gear. Okay. Oh, fatty roll, really? Okay. How much should do it? There we are. Nice. Thought it would take two. 1200 souls. Big payoff. Okay, I gotta go back and kill my trick. I forgot he was down there. So, I've never really liked Let's Play type of videos. I've always felt why aren't you just playing the game yourself? Like, how is it more fun to watch someone play the game <laughs> than just play the game? But people like to say, you know, oh, they teach you stuff, you know. And yeah, it's cool to pick up tidbits here and there, but for the most part, I still like to learn on my own. Anyway, that's why there's going to also be conversation in these videos so that there is a purpose that I would otherwise not see. I mean, if you like, let's play good for you, but honestly, just play the game. That's my opinion. Okay, so you talk to him. You don't kill him up there. You talk to him here to get a free sunlight medal. That's why you do it. And also because the easiest way to kill this guy is not to actually fight him, but to give him the boot. See? Dead. How do you get the stuff? If someone important dies in souls, you just reload the game and their stuff will be right where they were. <clears throat> where they were, like, originally, you know. Yeah. So, like, if, if, if for some ridiculous reason I carded Lotric all the way over here and then kicked him from this spot, his stuff would still spawn here, because that's where he was sitting. So if you ever like, where did it go, where did it go? You gotta look where they were originally. There's a character in the forest, the archer lady, Ferris. Um, <clears throat> she also drops stuff that will reappear in the spot that she was standing. And a lot of the time she'll roll away from you. Or roll off a cliff. <laughs> Which is why you need to reload the game to get her stuff. So. Just FYI. If you're having trouble finding her bow and all that. You go back to where she was originally standing in the forest. Okay. So. Continuing. Of the boring farm. I really like farming Boulder Knights because they drop Titanite. And I guess if you didn't want to go to the forest, uh, they drop Boulder Armor. It's not as good as Elite Knight, but you know, it's better than Cloth. Assuming that you, you, know, you don't care about fast rolling. Really early game, <laughs> if you want to fast roll, you gotta strip down. 
put any amount of armor on it. It's not happening. Yeah, see, so I knew I was going to be doing some farming in this video because I'm making the build from scratch instead of receiving gear from someone. Uh, so I knew that there's going to be like these periods of boring, you know, just like running around killing shit, same shit over and over. So fun! Oh, look at that, see, I gained a humanity. It's at seven now. Um. I mean, do I even need this Titanite? Do I need to farm this spot? I need Demon Titanite is what I need. Okay, I'm gonna break one of my rules and kill... Oh, hey. Nice. Kill the uh, Titanite Demon early. Without the gold ring. Because I want the Titanite so I can upgrade the sword. So, we want a more sturdy shield so we don't get chipped. Because I'm just going to block this guy. Because rolling around a Titanite Demon is kind of annoying because they attack like three times. Plus, if you get caught by that without a shield, usually it'll fucking kill you. Early on. So you notice I switch rapidly between uh, locking and not locking. Locking is great for blocking, but if you're not blocking, it's, it's not that good. It slows you down. You need to stay mobile. Didn't it? Okay. So if you are just going to be two-handing, grass crests that's what you want if you have extra weight for a shield because otherwise uh, none of the other shields do you any good on your back. <laughs> it's not like you stop arrows, right? Reinforce weapon. Great large sword. 5,000? Holy mackerel, I forgot it was like that. Shit. How many souls is, uh... I feel like gargles, gargles is worth 10k. I need 20k. I can get it. Okay. We'll skip farming. But I do recommend you farm this spot. Until you get 10 humanity. And enough Titanite to get your weapon. Whoop! To plus 5, assuming you're using a regular weapon. That is my solid recommendation for you. Fart the gargoyles. With a plus 5. Maybe you get lucky you get a Black Knight weapon. Those are good too, but they require a lot of stats. So, um, when it comes to leveling up, uh, my advice is minimum stats for weapon. If your weapon requires a ludicrous amount of strength, I recommend you just two-hand it. That'll, you know, that'll teach you how to play without a shield anyway, which is a good skill to now have. You can never tell if these guys are gonna leap at you or not. Right. So once you get the minimum strength to X required, your damage is going to come early on from upgrades, not from stats. Don't do that. You're just going to end up getting like one or two shot. You want to put your points into vitality and endurance. Uh... Endurance caps at 40. Vitality 40 50 is where you want to stop. Assuming you're going like full 120 build. Um, if you're going less than that, you don't need 40 endurance. For, usually. Unless you're doing like. You're like struggling to get that fast roll, you know, and you, and you want to carry a lot of crap or something. Oh, you. Yeah. Roll. <laughs> Come on! Always cut the tail. Even if you don't need it. You never know. Got a little sip. Round two. Whoop! Wow, that's 
Give me fucking damage. Oh, troll. This weapon is good early, but later on it's inferior to pretty much everything. Because the scaling is absolute trash, and you can't buff it either. All it has going for it is the base damage and low strat requirements. If you're two-handing, otherwise, no, not worth. So I'm going to have to ditch this later on. Like I said, probably for Obsidian Sword, Calamite's Tail. Very reliable. It's just kind of short. It's the only thing I don't like about that sword. It's short. I'm only going to have enough stats to two-hand it as well. Um, being limited to a two-handed moveset is kind of shit because you can't reliably block, blah, blah, blah. I'm also planning on picking up an Uchi Katana to have a reliable bleed. That's going to be a chaos weapon, though. Because I will not have 40 decks. Don't have room. Thou art welcome in time. I happen to really like that guy. Funny story. <laughs> First time I saw that dude. Right, okay. So I come down the ladder. I'm a noob. I've never done this before. I come down the ladder, I turn around, and immediately, here's this scary black Sephiroth looking fucker in that creepy pose, and I assumed it was an enemy, so I hit him, and like, you know, he got hurt, and so I just panicked, and I just kept hitting him, and like, he started talking, and I just kept hitting him, and he ended up dying, and <laughs> I didn't even know who he was, or what he was, or, I was like, oh shit, that was scary, like... Right after the boss, like, after I have, you know, low Estus and whatnot, they put that scary guy, like, wow, this game's mean. Um, but yeah, regret. <laughs> he turned out to be pretty cool. Don't make my mistake. Then again, if you're playing blind, make all the mistakes. Do everything. It's fine. Enjoy it. Ho Oh yeah, you guys are alive. The Knights of Baldur. I imagine them being French. With the accent. They just strike me as like those kind of refined... Oh! <laughs> Where do I want to go from here? I don't want to go to Lower Berg yet. I'll do that after I visit the forest. But yeah, I'm showing you the usual order that I go in, which you might find useful if you're trying to do... Like if you've played before and you're looking for an efficient route to get all the things. Although it is about time to wrap it up and say goodbye. So I'm going to be headed to the forest now to join the Covenant so that when I go down to the swamp, I can get the gesture and maybe a weapon or two from uh, Shiva. That is my route. Start at the top, work your way down to minimize backtracking. So, hope you enjoyed the first episode of Pro Tips and Conversation with AC Pilot. Uh... Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Catch you later.